right. Ultimate Fighter, season 27, undefeated. We got one of the, the main faces of the show. And we're going to review today, review episode 9. I know it's kind of late. We usually do it earlier in the week. But what can you do? People live in their lives, right? That's so right. fuck them. It, it caught up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, like, in the show... The first thing that I noticed is they finally, like you've been saying, John Gunther was supposed to come out, and finally yeah. he came out on the show, like, nine episodes in. Why did they take so fucking long? I have no idea. They, like, I'm sure that they could spread Gunther out throughout the whole season, and I don't understand why they don't. Like, I understand they want to focus on particular fighters for the episode, but at the end of the day, it's meant to be reality television and reality was that every day John Gunther had us talking about him like he he's truly an interesting interesting guy definitely um his performance in the talent show killed everybody and also yeah. what was interesting about that it was is with the guy that he was going to fight yeah you know and uh i thought that was kind of cool to show that in this show, you know, like, who was he fighting again? He was fighting Mike Trezano. Mike Trezano, that's right. The guy with the American flag cowboy hat, he, which is kind yeah. of odd to me. Because he's Italian? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, I had the same argument with him. You but know? he loves it. He loves that hat. Where is he from, Trezano? He, he's from, uh, like, uh, where do people from Jersey Shore come from? New Jersey? Yeah, New Jersey. It's from something like that, New Jersey or some, something really? like that. Really? And he wears a cowboy yeah. hat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't get it either. He trains with, like, Jimmy Rivera. Yeah, um, that's New Shane Jersey, Bogle. New York. Tiger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tiger uh, Schulman. Tiger Schulman. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, he's, a, he's, a, he's a cool guy. Um, he loves his American american hat but like a lot of the things even about trezano trezano is an interesting guy too he was like the house cook he like he knew how to cook anything and everything and um he was always makes making cakes for everyone you guys needed to see the cakes but they didn't show none of that they should have you see those are the things that they should have shown on the show man like that's more interesting about the fighters you know their preparation of course it's interesting but they should have cut back on showing so much of like them preparing for the fight because we already know what they're preparing for. They should have focused more on the the person. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I kind of feel like the same way as well. There were so many characters and there was so much more that they they could have done, but um, but yeah, I guess they went with another another view. You know, and I guess there's a reason for it. Because in, like, some seasons, we've seen so much of the house be shown and so then just straight to the fights. Uh, this season, um, I think they've just kind of taken a different approach to it, you know? Yeah. I, th uh, I think that they didn't have enough episodes to show all of what really happened. <laughs> maybe. I don't know, man. It's just, it's kind of a weird angle that they're taking, but... I don't know. I think, what do you think? you think that the Ultimate Fighter, the next season is going to be the last season? It seems like it, huh? I would hope not. I would hope not. Like, it, I realize now how great of a platform the Ultimate Fighter is, like how good it is for a young fighter to go through the Ultimate Fighter and learn so much. It's a great show. It's a great concept. And I just feel like, when it first started, it was all exciting and it was all new. But now everyone just expects something more than than what it was. Like, if this Ultimate Fighter season was the first Ultimate Fighter season, people would be talking about it like it was crazy. But I think um, tw after 27 seasons or however many seasons they've had, um, people just have kind of gotten over it and want something new. So, yeah, and I think that's why they have that Contender series. I think that series is a little bit better because you don't have to stay in a house with a bunch of people. You could just yeah, fight once and yeah. get a contract. And there's yeah. more than one person getting a contract too. Yeah, that, that's 100% right. 
and it, it is a cool concept as well. Like, and it is something different. It's like it's they're kind of going towards that ESPN view and how ESPN did their Tuesday night fights and and stuff like that. So they're trying to hit that market like well in advance before even hitting that television deal. Um, but I think it's a cool concept. Um, I like the fights that are on the Contender Series, and I like the way they um, they kind of angle it. Like you come in, you you just go in and perform. Just put on a show, and even guys have had losses on the contender series, and they've brought them back because they they fought good fights. And be, even guys, have, I think I've I've seen a guy lose on the contender series and then get brought into the UFC on short notice. Yeah, even guys so that make, have won on the contender series, they're on this season of the contender series again. Yeah, that's right. You know, so and they're getting paid well too. Yeah, way more than a lot of places. Yeah, they're getting paid more than like from other promotions are paying. You know, they're getting paid five and five US, which is pretty good, decent pay, you know, uh, especially for contenders, people that are trying to get break it through to the UFC. Um, you know, it would be, I just, I really want the contender series to, um, I want to, I want to add something a little bit different to it because I feel like this was meant to happen and they said it would happen and it really hasn't. Um, the guys that are on the verge of getting cut in the UFC, maybe f- fight in the contender series as well. Yeah. So, you know, like kind of a guy's got one fight left on his deal. For instance, they've had three fights or whatever, and they'll probably get cut. Um, put him, Instead of just cutting him and not giving him that last fight, just give him that last fight in the contender series at least, instead of just cutting him. That's a damn good idea, man. And, and actually giving them another chance at redeeming themselves. And if they lose... The other guy wins. The other guy gets in his spot, basically. That's right. That's right. And in this way, it kind of recycles and keeps like the the best guys there, and then the guys that can't really hang will, will fall out and go into the contender series and out, and then you guys will come up in. Could you see a fighter like Jake Ellenberger fighting in the contender series, though? Hundred percent. Like, okay, fair enough. They don't want to pay guys like Ellen. Like Ellenberger wants to get paid. Fucking. 35, 35, 40, and 40 grand for his fights. So it's pretty hard to kind of say, um, oh, I'll come back and fight for five and five in the contender series. But some of those guys, they can't meet out the end of their contract, and the UFC have the right to cut them. So instead of cutting them, just say, hey, listen, we'll give you another fight for half of the purse if you want. Otherwise, you know, we're not going to give you another fight. I don't know, something, they can come to some type of compromise. Um, you know, if Ellenberg is going to go and fight, I'm sure he wants to fight in the UFC. If he's going to get cut anyway and, and try and fight someone else, he might as well fight in the contender series and try and get see how good he can test himself with an up-and-comer. They should make another show, but that show is what your idea was, is where wow. guys are already in the, in the UFC. They're, about, they're on the verge of being cut. They would yeah. fight a contender coming up because – when you call it the contender series, it means like two contenders coming in and fighting each other, right? So those veterans wouldn't really make a – it wouldn't make much sense for them to come down and fight them. But if you make another show called like Saturday Night Survival, some shit yeah. like that. <laughs> Saturday Night Survival with Sean Shelby. Yeah. Sean yeah. Shelby, Saturday Night Survival. And then, yeah. you know, have them that, fight somebody like that. I think that that's a – Pretty cool way to, you know, start your UFC career, maybe end your UFC career. Uh, maybe some people don't want to end their UFC career, but I've seen a lot of these guys end their UFC career and then go and fight in, like, a little organization and lose there anyway, you know? So, I guess, kind of better than nothing. It know? is better than nothing. It is. And, and, and it, it kind of has that reality television hit as well. You know, and it can hit some raw emotion and get some different eyes to come and see it. You know, because at the end of the day, one person is going to have their dream taken away and one person is going to have their dream like, uh, pushed towards their dream. People love that shit. Yeah, and they could have that shit at, like, uh, a small venue and you could sell tickets for that because you will have UFC veterans on there fighting. Exactly. You have UFC veterans fighting against up-and-comers, like, that are hometown guys maybe even. Yeah, maybe you should go to, like, every different city and find the contenders for that city and then bring in the veterans to fight those contenders and whoever wins stays in the UFC. 
You look at look at this, for instance, right? We have the tough gym that's in Vegas that they host all these fights at. In like Sydney, for example, there is like ten UFC gyms. I'm sure one of those gyms can host a fight night one night, kind of like they do on the Contender series, and find, you know, the next group of guys coming up with the last group of guys they want to kick out or whatever, and do a fight. It's it's possible. It's an idea. I don't know. Are you gonna have heaps of people on the internet saying this is why it couldn't work, this is why it could work, but it's just an idea. You know, it would be fucking cool if it could happen. It is a fucking good idea, man. Why why wouldn't you have that? Why wouldn't you allow somebody that's in the UFC to get a second chance and fight somebody that's trying to get into the UFC? Makes no makes no sense to fucking hate that idea because it's like yeah. if you're a fighter, you would support it. I think. It, it it makes no sense to hate the idea, but people on the internet will find a reason to. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Twitter, Twitter, they love that shit. Twitter is like the land of... I, I swear to God, Twitter is the land of hate. Nah, you know, I think Reddit's the land of hate. <laughs> well, Twitter and Reddit is very closely tied together, I believe. I think a lot of the people on Reddit are in Twitter. I don't, I don't even go on Reddit. Reddit's only good, like, big... Is it big in Australia, Reddit? Nah, nah, nah. Reddit, Twitter's not even big in Australia. Exactly. I'm like the... A person in Australia on Twitter. I swear. Oh, me and Damian Brown. <laughs> and Beck Rawlings. Yeah, uh, uh, basically the UFC people. If you're yeah, in that's UFC right. and you're in Australia, you're probably gonna have Twitter. Twitter doing something. That's right. But other than that, nobody really cares. Like, even in Asia, nobody cares about Twitter. Nobody cares about Reddit. It's all the North American thing. Yep. Anyways, going back to the show... Before we get into yep. the fight, let's talk about the cars. You guys went and drove some exotic cars. What did you drive? I drove a McLaren. Oh, shit. That's actually a good car. The orange McLaren. And it's funny because um, I think I traded cars. I think I traded cars with Tyler Diamond. I think he had another car and I had a car. And then I, I wanted to drive a McLaren. So me and him ended up swapping. And then... Um, and then there were some fucking cool cars. But Bri they made it like Bryce Mitchell was driving and, like, drifting that fucking um, <laughs> that, that car. He wasn't – that wasn't him. He was driving, like, a normal car. That car was, like, a drift car. And there's a video of me, Joe Warren, and I think Chris Camozzi, and we're in the back of that car screaming our head off because they were like drifting around and shit. Like they didn't show none of that. Joe Warren nearly bit my arm off in the back of that car. You know, when they were drifting it around. He was shitting himself. He was so scared. Yeah, that drifting shit is scary, man. But it was it was fun. Like I, I got to I hit like I don't know if it's two hundred miles, kilometer, I don't know. I'm not really into cars as much these days, but I put my foot all the way down on the McLaren. It was something I'd never felt before. That was unreal. And they let you drive it as fast as you want, too. In the straightaways? The what? In the straightaways? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because turning that shit, it ain't no joke. No, no, no. Like, they, 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 have like, they have, like, checkpoints where they're like, all right, slow down here. But they're, like, from, like, this point to this point, they're, like, go as fast as you want. And, like, you put your foot down, they're like, all right, there's, like, someone next to you, and they're like, oh, slow down here. So you start slowing down, they're like, all right, now give it everything it's got. And, like, you just go again. So it's pretty fun. Kane oh, Velasquez. Are you a big car person? No, oh, I used to be when I was younger. Um, but, like, not so much now that I've gotten older. Um, I like cars, but I'm not really so into them these days. Uh, my brother's more into cars than I am. Some of the cars that they had were just like normal cars, though. Like, Not I've had that friends that had some of those cars. Like the McLaren, that's like some next level shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like a few, uh, I think a few guys got like ripped off when they had to drive the Acura. <laughs> yeah. I've got a friend that's got one of them too, you know. Um, but like most of them were like Lamborghini, Ferrari. Um, they didn't. I don't. They didn't even show half the cars that we got in. But like. Oh, the Audi R8. I've got a friend who's got an Audi R8. They're cool. I was like, I'm not driving one of them. I've got a friend who's got one of them. But, yeah. yeah. It was funny. We nearly got into a little fight. Well, not like a fight. Like, there was a little argument that happened there between um, between Thailand Clark 
um, Tyler Diamond and Rosendo, one of the coaches, because uh, Thailand like refused to um, to like drive a car. We don't know why, but he was like, I don't want to fucking drive all this shit. And then Tyler was like, Oh, come on, man! Like, join in. You know, we're all getting in the car. You know, and he's like, I fucking told you, motherfuckers, I don't want to drive. Fuck all you guys, blah blah blah. And then Rosendo was kind of uh, making fun of him for being a crybaby. And Thailand didn't like it too much, but it was awkward as fuck. Is Th- was Thailand like that the whole time on the show? Yeah, he just didn't want to get involved in a lot of the things. Like, if, if um, like if he's seen people like hanging out and talking, he would put himself in in the corner sometimes on purpose, and he just wouldn't get involved. Though you'd make a joke towards him, and he'd be like trying to get serious for one second, then he's joking the next. He's super bipolar. Well, they should have showed that too, you know? Yeah. 100%. 100%. They should have just let the reins loose and just showed everything of everybody's fucking wild shit. Because I think that would have drew more attention to the people. Um, I'm pretty sure that they had an agenda of who they wanted to promote after they filmed everything. Yeah. Uh, and that's who came out on the show. But now let's get to the fight with the Trezano fight and the Gunther. Trezano versus Gunther. Man, Gunther just took a fucking beating. Like no other man has on that show. His face we, was fucked up. I told that, everyone that would happen. I said, Trezano's going to keep hitting him. Hunter's going to keep walking forward. And he's going to keep popping shots. It's going to be ugly. But, you know. It was Trezano, ugly, man. Like, yeah. Trezano, Trezano didn't pull the trigger. I think he just kept playing. He played it safe. Real, real safe. Which is sometimes what you've got to do. But at the same time, it was your last fight. I wanted to see Trezano go out there and put it on. And I was happy, like, Gunther had his moments in the fight. He had his moments when he got him down. And he he showed more than what he showed in 17 seconds. Everyone's like, oh, he's so horrible and this and that. But, you know, he showed a lot more than what he was in the first fight. And you got to look back. And if you look back at Gunther's record, you can see that he has kind of beaten the hardest guys to get in to be undefeated. He'd be all undefeated guys. He beat one of Matt Serra's guys as well. He's a tough guy. He's a good grappler. He just kind of got exposed when it came down to having more than one tool. You know? Um, he used that tool real well, and, but he got found out. And sometimes once the glass shatters and everyone realizes, the whole world realizes. So... Um, I think like, the myth of, of Gunther got like kind of unraveled on the show and it, and it showed when he fought Trezano as well. You know, on the local scene, I think, no, I think he just flew under the radar and no one picked up on him. Everyone slept on him and they, they lost. So then when he got onto the show, everyone was kind of on the ball. No one wanted to lose. And, and it kind of showed that uh, like, there's a level to it. Yeah, but one thing is there is no doubt about Gunther is he is tough. He is tough. He's got heart. He's, and, it, and we realized that in training. He would take a beating in training. He would get put out in training. And, and he kept coming. We knew he was tough. Now, Trezano, he has two wins. But kind of coasting in a way, if you really look at it, right? He's just coasting. Yeah. And maybe he, that's his plan. Maybe he wanted to just coast to... to, to you know, save himself. But he doesn't really need to save himself, does he? No, nah, no, not really. Trezano is talented. He's, he's good. He just, I don't know, he just, he, he he's always pumped up, but I think, I just feel like he's, he was on the show, he was lacking that last killer instinct. You know, even in, in his first fight, I, I felt like kind of the same way. Like, because Trezano is good. Like, great striker, good wrestler. Uh, he's all around really, really good. And I just feel like when he was fighting, you know, he just lacked that, that killer instinct that he needed, um, you know. But, but he did well. And look, he's in the final. That's all that kind of matters, I guess. That is. You know? That's all that matters, man, is yeah. that you're in the final. And But the thing is, the finals doesn't really even guarantee that you'll be on the roster. You have to That's win. Right. You have to win. Yeah, we've seen guys lose in the finale and not come back. Um, you know, and, and never and, see them again. And the other guys that fight in the finale get one fight deals as well. 
They're not four fight deals. If you're fighting on the finale, you're on a one fight deal. Um, so let's see what happens. Yeah, it's, it, there's a lot of elements, I guess, to getting signed to the UFC. It's not just about, I guess, who's the best fighter or if you won, if you even won. You know, you have to perform. You have to kind of catch the eye of the, be, the matchmakers and, of course, Dana White. Yeah, you have to be memorable. Like I always say, you're only as good as the person that's watching you. You know? So the next fight is going to be – fuck. Katona versus Bryce Mitchell. That's right. Katona versus, which is the best fight, best, yep. best matchup of the season probably so far. Yeah, this without a doubt is the best matchup of the season with two of the most technical guys um, in there. Um, Bryce, people may think he's not technical. Maybe when they see him like hitting pads or something. Super, super smart fighter, has a good game plan. And um, both these guys are super technical. And this is by far the most technical fight of the season. Well, I'm looking forward to this fight next week or this week or wherever, whenever you're watching this. Uh, it's going to Hey, when I, was, when I was watching this fight, I was up. Now, moving on. I had no name, um, but I was up on my. Huh? Yeah, I go, I go. I had no knee, but I was standing on my feet for that fight. <laughs> now, when you were in the Moving house, on. right, your knees hurt. All these fights are going on. So, what are you doing the whole time? Are you catching, catching the fighters? <laughs> <laughs> um, I started help. I just started helping. I just started helping out, and uh, I wasn't allowed to train. Um, I was like on a, like a no contact thing. So um, in like the day, you could see in, the, in this last episode, I was trying to, I was warming Gunther up and I was just trying to tell him to relax because he's real stiff. And I was trying to just get him to move his feet around because he's, he's, he's always pretty stiff and he plots forward. Um, I was trying to get that out of him. But I started helping out some of the other fighters um, that I knew that were getting ready for the semifinals. I felt like Gunther wasn't getting as much as much help. So um, I, I helped Gunther out a little bit with movement. I held some pads for him and stuff. And then um, I was helping Bryce Mitchell as well. Um, me and Bryce were training at night because um, he felt like he wanted to get extra work in when Brad wasn't at training. So at night, I'd be holding pads for him in the backyard. Uh, we'd work over a bit of game planning and just work over some stuff on the floor. I couldn't really grapple, but I could hold pads and kind of move. My knee was pretty fucked up, but... Um, but I still wanted to help out, so I think that will probably be shown in the next episode. Well, they did. They did show you helping Gunther out. Yeah, I think they'll show me helping Bryce probably out. I'll probably get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> I, don't I haven't know. seen. It doesn't matter. Well, they announced the fight for the 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 finale, right? It's gonna be Luis Pena versus um, Richie, Smallin. Richie Smallin, right? Which is a clash of styles, big time. Big clash of styles, big leg locks and, and, and grappling against uh, finesse and, and, and striking. Um, like Luis is pretty good on the floor. Uh, he's, he's pretty handy. I've rolled around with, I've rolled around with both of these guys. Um, Luis is pretty handy on the floor and Rich is a killer on the floor. Um, Richie can hold his own standing. He's tough, but you know, Luis has like, has this like, kind of Diaz pressure where he keeps popping doesn't have a lot of power, but he's always there and he's pop, 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 pop. He's always there. So I think it's going to be a good fight because I think that um, Richie can, like, withstand some of the – like, he can take some of the damage that uh, Luis is going to throw at him. And I think that Luis is good enough to defend some of the, the grappling exchanges that are going to come towards him. So it's going to be really interesting to see who's going to um, – come up Trump in their style. Who do you think is the strongest? Like, is Luis's striking like, strong or Richie's grappling strong? Like, if you made a comparison, like it's, the it's level hard, that they're at. It's, it's hard to say because you would think, uh, 
it, it depends, like, because every fight's different. So it's like, who is this person fighting for their strength to be better than the other? But if I had to go with someone's strength being more dangerous, I would say that it would be Richie's uh, submission game. Um, because I feel like that that could stop something at any time in the fight. Kind of like a knockout hit. Mm. Um, Luis is a great striker, but I don't think he's got the knockout hit, if you get what I'm trying to say. So, he's, uh, like, Richie's got something that, that, will, that will stop you, that will finish you. Um, uh, Richie, uh, Luis has something that I think he can, he'll pop you for one, two, three rounds. Like, he'll keep going. And he could not, he's knocked guys out with, like, knees and stuff like that, but I just think that he's going to, He's going to use his hands a lot more and box with uh, Luis more, uh, with Richie more, and that's how the fight is kind of going to go. Is it going to go three rounds or is it going to be a, a quick finish with uh, like Richie jumping on his legs? Because I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it, uh, Richie rolls for like an Imanari roll or jumps for a heel hook out of nowhere and tries to get something. He's dangerous. Yeah, tall, linky. Striker versus a shorter grappler with strong yep. submissions. This yep. is good matchmaking. Making it, it is. It is. Look, a lot of people were like, "Oh, why is Richie getting a spot in in the semi in in the finale?" Um, you know, especially when Dana. You could see that Dana wasn't too like happy with him. I think um, it's just it's what was meant to happen. Luis was meant to get a shot in the UFC. Um, you know, he put on a good performance. He's getting that shot. And Richie gets to kind of uh, right his wrongs of what happened. And you make up for what happened on the show. Well, the UFC is doing a solid, man, because they could have just said, fuck it, you guys got injured. This is your guys' fault. We don't even want you to be on the, you know, on the card. They could have done that if they really wanted to. They don't have to give these guys fights. Yeah, that's right. Dana, Dana was cool. Like, Dana was real, real, real good with all of us after the season. He, he, like, I think that it's apparent, especially on the contender and with a lot of the things that are in social media the last couple of weeks, Dana's one of those guys that if he doesn't like you, he doesn't like you. Like, if he, if he wants to promote you, he'll promote you. If he doesn't want to promote you, he, doesn't, he, he won't promote you. Um, and I think that he, he won't, like, bullshit anyone. So, with all of us, he was, like, super keen on our season. Like, he was real good towards all of us. He was, he was real helpful when, when he was around. You know, he was always speaking to us. He wasn't always just like in and out. He would come around and he'd sit and he'd talk to us sometimes. If we ever asked him something, he'd answer us straight up. Um, when we all went out to dinner, anyone who wanted to like say anything to him or speak to him about anything, he was real open-minded to, to listening about it. And when he spoke to us about how he felt like our season went, he was real positive. So I think that at the end of everything that, he just wants to give everyone that's on that season um, the, a fair go if they performed. Hopefully, man. Hopefully. A lot of these guys will be crushed if they don't yeah. get the chance. You know what I mean? But um, hey, look, everybody like, can't get a I, chance. Look, I'm not fighting in the finale, but uh, like I'm happy to see Luis and Richie fighting in the finale as well. You know, like because it's, it's what's right. It is. It is. It is. Uh, they're doing Hopefully. a good... Uh, I even hope to see, like, Ricky. I hope to see uh, Kyla. I hope to see uh, all these other guys that I feel like were great perform in the in the finale as well. Were there – was there some saltiness as the CZ went, went along? Because right now you're in episode nine, which is meaning that the season's almost all over, right? So guys that lost, that didn't make it back onto the to the semifinals – because of your luck, because that's basically luck, man. You lost, but you coming back on the semifinals is luck, right? Were people salty? Was there a lot of, like, hidden animosity that they're not showing on the yeah. show? Yeah, and they may show it, and they may show it. Like, some of the fighters and, like, I know, like, one of the, uh, one of the 55ers was real upset that why wasn't he considered to come back? And they kind of went with Gunther, but... um. But yeah, I'm I'm hoping they show that as well because it it like we kind of drained it out. Like a lot of the guys that had their head on on tight when we felt that saltiness, we were just like kind of just push that negative energy away, and and it kind of eventually like fucked off. 
But um, but yeah, like it, there was a few times where people make like stupid slight comments. And might get shown in the next episode or two. I'm surprised that nobody went at Denali. You know what? Tapping early or like not like tap ghost tapping or oh. I'm surprised it didn't happen. Me, me, me. I think it was me and Jay probably bullied him a little bit because I said, right? I'm like, why did you pull guard? He goes, I didn't pull guard. We kept arguing over him pulling guard, and I'm like, you pulled guard. I'm like, don't talk shit. You pulled guard without the like he without the neck. Pull guard and guillotine. Fair enough. Without the neck, no. Um, <laughs> but even after the choke, I was like, man, I thought you could have got out of that choke, and he's like. Man, it was so tight on my neck. I thought my head was going to pop off. I think he was talking shit. And I called him out on it a few times. And I think some of the other guys did. But Delaney's a, a cool dude. Like, no one wanted to bully him too much. Because as much as they make him sound like a dick, it is hard to hate the man when you actually know him. He's well, the, the, he he the, had people heated, you know, in the early episodes. They were mad. He would have people heated throughout the whole... He would have at least one person heated a day, but the rest of the house would like him. And then the next day, him and that person would be cool and someone else hated him. It was just how he was. Like he, and he did it on purpose. But he was a real, real funny guy. Like, real nice guy. He never did nothing. Like, I don't think there was ever a time in the house, ever one time in the house, that I didn't like... I was like, fuck Delaney or like anything like that. He was my roommate. I was like, cool with Delaney. He was funny. I, I, I don't care what no one says. I hope I see him in the UFC. I don't of course, what no man, of course. He's a character. You, you want characters to be in the UFC, even though they might not be, you know, as good as they, they say they are. But hey, why not? Let me ask something. Can you imagine him at a press conference opposite a UFC champion talking smack? It would be fucking hilarious. I didn't get what anyone says. It didn't have to be a champion. It could just be could anybody. be anyone. It could be anyone. He'll tell like he'll tell Cyborg he's got more money than her. Exactly. Yeah. Um now we saw on the news, you know, on the Twitterverse that a list came out for Usada. Yeah. Oh yeah. And on the list, it says a bunch of UFC fighters' names, and there's one name. It doesn't say. It says contender one, which has never happened before. Yeah. And a lot of speculation is going yeah, around. Yeah, I see it on Twitter. Yeah, and and someone said like, "Hey, this name is I, supposed to be one of the fighters in the contender series." And it's like, why would you saw the test guys in the contender series when they're not even fighting in the UFC? Yeah, that's right. Or they don't even have a possibility of fighting because they have to win their fights. And it doesn't matter about the result because why? The shit is live. Yeah, that, that is right. So that's kind of a – I think that that's a lie right there. I think, like, yeah. why would you even – it doesn't even matter. You could just take them off the list or off the fight and replace them with the, somebody else. So that doesn't – Do you think – so do you, would you reckon someone maybe from the Ultimate Fighter? That's what I think. I think it's somebody from the Ultimate Fighter that's going to fight in the finale – has gotten popped for something. Dude, do you think he, like he, so he's been red flagged? Yeah, red flag basically. If you were to pick someone on this season of the Ultimate Fighter to have been red flagged, who would it be? Oh man, why are you gonna ask me that? Nah. <laughs> Let's do it. Nope. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. Say it. What, Tyler David? Yes, <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that, but. My other one is Brad Katona. Brad Katona? He looks like a mini Brock Lesnar. Look yeah. at him. Yeah. But, oh, listen, when he takes his glasses off, picture him with a big, like, sword in the middle of his chest and, like, a big back tattoo. He's a mini Brock Lesnar. Possibly. Oh, wait, but what's his name? It <laughs> Brock be, Katona. It could be uh, Zunega. Because, you know, who knows what he's eating over there and his native country, you know, it might have some steroids in like Mexico. 100%. I could be Zuniga. Or, or you can't even put it past maybe Trezana. You look at Trezana's body. <laughs> Trezana. Trezana. Oh, you know, he's from like Jersey Shore. They love steroids. <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. Juice that's monkeys. True. Italians. 
That's right. They do. Uh, what what do they have? They have laundry, Wait. gym, yeah. tanning, GTL, gym tan G GTL. <laughs> yeah, GTL, G uh, tanning, gym, laundry. I think that's what it's called, or LTG, or some shit like that. But yeah. Something like that. But then there's the rumor that you're all that you got cracked. Did you see that one? <laughs> no one started that rumor. <laughs> Did they really? Because of your knee. Who said that? Nobody. <laughs> no. Really? No, I'm just fucking with you. Since we're accusing yeah. people. Since we're accusing huh? people, fuck it. Yeah. I'm just fucking with you. Thank you. You said I can come test me to, like tomorrow. Oh, of course. Of course. I know. I'm, I'm, hey, if someone's going to get angry about this, we're not accusing anybody of, of using steroids, man. We're just fucking around. No one's all fucking on steroids. Alan Diamond, where you at? <laughs> what yeah, about, no, not... hey, who's the least likely on steroids? Who's the least likely on steroids? Probably Like, do you least. mean, or do you mean because I rolled with them and I didn't feel like they were strong, or? No, it's just like just looking at them. You know the smell test. Oh, yeah, Jay. Jay. Jay Miller. Oh, really? Because he looks like an old man? He looks like a sh little pudgy old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, my brother reckons it's Gunther, but I'm like, Gunther is definitely on some steroids. Gunther eats some shit that we never heard about. He's eating that llama meat, probably, man, that nobody fucking eats. Alpaca meat. Alpaca meat, yeah, alpaca meat or whatever the fuck. <laughs> Anyways, now, what else was there? Oh yeah, Australia had a big weekend last a couple last weekend, right? In Chicago. Yep. Oh yeah. So now the big story right there out of that is, of course, Robert Whitaker wins. Um, uh, Ty Tuvasa wins. Megan Anderson showed that she has potential, dude. Like she showed that hey, she 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 hasn't been in the case for a long time because you could kind of give her a little pass on that fight, right? She showed some weaknesses. But then she, she showed that she got fucking power. Yeah, when she landed that knee in the holly, I was like, oh, my God, she's going <laughs> to knock her out. But holly, holly, like, pulled an audible there, changed her game, plan, and then was like, fuck this, I'm taking this. Strapper to grappler. Yeah. But um, yeah. so the thing was is the weight thing. Like, you know, Dana White is coming out saying that he's going to go back to the old, you know, weigh-ins where it's at 4 o'clock. And all the fighters come out and say, like, why are you doing this? The morning weigh-ins is much better. Now, what yeah, is your opinion on that? I feel like the morning weigh-ins are much better. I feel like they, um, they give the fighters the, the right amount of time to rehydrate properly and perform at their best, which is kind of what we really want. Um, some people are like, oh, they're, but they're ex going more extreme because they have more time to rehydrate. I don't know. Per personally, I don't feel like that. I feel like I'm still going to cut to the same weight class, not push it because I have a few extra hours. I just feel like those few extra hours are a blessing that, um, that I can get healthier back in time. So um, that's my outlook on it. And I'm pretty sure that's like most fighters' outlooks on it as well, like that I've spoken to. Um, so I would like to see it stay where it is. But um, if it's got, it, as, as long as it's the same for everyone, it doesn't really matter. Really. That's right. Um, I I like it early, but at the same time, as long as it's the same, as long as it's, it's something set and it's not different from country to country, let's just keep it the same. However it is, if it's 36 hours or whatever it is, let's like have that like a set thing that if it's not going to be different with one commission to another, let's just have one thing. Why don't they just let everybody weigh in until four o'clock? Like just give them until four o'clock that day. If you want to weigh in at 8 in the morning, I, weigh in at 8 in the morning. I guess because the commission doesn't want to sit around. Fuck. Isn't that your That's only thing, job like, to sit like, around? Yeah, the, the UFC can't get, it wouldn't give a shit because at the end of the day, the show's going to go on and they want their fighters to be healthy and whatever. But the, all these commissions, they just want to get in, get out, get paid. The commission is just as bad as anyone else in this whole thing. Yeah, they're, a lot of times they're to blame for a lot of the bullshit that goes on, especially with the judging and the, the refereeing and all that shit that they're doing. And some commissions don't use the new rules. 
and some commissions yeah. use Look, new rules. It's like, what the fuck the, is going on? The commission, commission pulled um, Yoram Romero from his weight cut when he had an hour to go when he was 0.2 pounds over, right? Why th did they pull him off? Because they felt like he'd cut too much weight and he can't cut anymore. That, you know what? That's completely fair. That is 150% fair. But who made this call? What did they make this call off, right? And, and why was it made? Because at the end of the day, the commission has to realize that the consumer, uh, consumer who is myself, who's buying pay-per-view, deserves answers because they're getting paid for their job. We're paying for a service, so something needs to be said about it. I feel like when, when situations like this happen with Yo Romero, it's put on the UFC, but the commission doesn't come enough and, and give enough information. All they say is, oh, he looked drained, so we pulled him off. And I think they kind of get the same thing with like that Jessica Aguilar situation. Had chapped lips, but they didn't say exactly what it was. So now all these rumors have come out about her having some herpes or or something on her face that people seen, but we never got a proper explanation from anyone. So what happens to the person that's paying the money to see all of this? That's right. Because remember when they pulled what's her name? I think Gonzalez because she had fake boobs. Yeah, see shit like that. You know, but then they come, they make Gonzalez come out and say it, and then they change their, their mind. Once a, a decision is made, the decision is made, whether they like it or not. If, it's irre if it was reversed, you know, justice was served. But once a decision is made, there should be an explanation to why it was made, you know, and it shouldn't be overturned if the explanation is given. That's true, man. Like, they need to figure this shit out because these commissions are fucking it up for a lot of fighters. And they don't want to go fight in certain cities or even countries because... Yeah. Hey, hey, I know a lot of fighters, even in Australia, on local shows, don't want to go to certain states because they, they know certain commissions are so disgusting to deal with. Um, you know, I think that, like, I don't know, there's not going to ever be a world commission, but, like, there just needs to be, like, something set that fighters around the world can, can be comfortable going to another country and fighting and knowing that the commission isn't going to fuck them up. So weight cutting doesn't, isn't meant to look good. It's not meant to, to be easy for everyone. Sometimes it does get, it does get rough, but it, you know, we take you know, that like on. Our, you know, like how Joe Rogan and like these guys come out and talk about one championships weigh-in policy. And it's like, Oh, they're doing this new state of the art, new tech. What state of the art? Well, there is no proof to any of this one championship weight cutting system. There is no, there's nothing to it, right? Like you go into a room, they make you piss, maybe. You walk out, okay, cool. You're hydrated. Okay, I'm looking at your piss. It doesn't look that yellow. You're good to go. <laughs> Fighters are still cutting weight and doing shit on that as well. And they're, 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 they're breaking that system and people have met, uh, missed weight, and because the media is not allowed in, no one says nothing about it. It's bullshit. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Brace tried the same thing uh, in Australia. Brace tried the exact same thing. Didn't work. They didn't even test them on rehydrate. They, the fighters came in. They're like, so what are we doing? They did nothing about it. That's why they're, they're going bankrupt. That's why one will probably go bankrupt. Yeah, the... The I wish people would, before they promote something, they would educate themselves on what's actually going on with that system. Because, like you said, weight cutting is never going to go away, it's going to be Listen, part of the sport until the sport is dead. If I don't see it with my own eyes, it's not real. <laughs> right? If there's no video, you didn't film it, it didn't happen. That's right? why the there's media a... should go in there, like the UFC does. UFC shows you, like, hey. We're going to allow the media in here. You guys will see everything that's going on with the weigh-ins. And it's transparent. It's live. You can fucking watch it on Facebook and YouTube. And yeah. Stuff, right? Yeah. You know, and, and, that, and that's fair on the consumer. It is. It is. Fair on the consumer yeah. and the fighters, too. Yeah, that's right. There's no fucking, like, I guess, favoritism or whatever Look, the fuck. Hey, I, w I wish, I wish, like... There was no weight cutting either, you know. But 
my like for instance my i cut weight i cut a lot of weight but why do i cut weight because really my body my body structure isn't meant to fight guys at that same weight even if they're not cut like i know i've seen other guys my own walk around weight when i'm like fat and i'm like oh, i can't fight this guy this guy's way too big you've got to cut weight it's about your health as well you know you don't want to be fighting these these huge guys and being at a disadvantage that could be as dangerous itself weight cutting will always be around but it just i just feel like everyone's trying to just complicate it and i don't know i'm not i'm not an, i'm not an expert hey what I'm about a, but i'm a fighter, fighter i'm walking around at 185 who's that cyborg <laughs> Yeah, that's that's pretty normal. That's pretty standard. But it's pretty cyborg, crazy. For, it's crazy for a woman. That's what I'm saying. Like Jesus Christ, yeah. that's like bigger than me. I'm I'm not even 185. Like I'm barely, like barely 180. I, I can yeah I can I get up to like 180. You know, um, if I hit 185, I'm pretty pudgy. If you put me at 185 next to Cyborg at 185, trust me, I'm not bigger than her. She's like. <laughs> Built, I'm like fat. Me too. Same yeah. thing. Um, yeah, man, it's never going to be an answer for that. So all these fighters coming out and saying that it's, they don't like it. Man, at the end of the day, who makes the decisions? There's no vote. Yeah, that's right. Hey, no like Max Holloway said, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is, for real. I think he stole that from somebody named Dana White. Is it? Yeah, I think Dana White used to say that shit all the fucking time. And yeah. then everybody else started saying it. And then Max Holloway took the fucking reins and went with it. Yeah, I'm taking it now. Now it's yours. Now you're going to spread it through the yeah. lands. Uh, anyways, next week, Brad Katona, Bryce Mitchell. That's going to be the best fight of the season. We'll talk yep. after that. And hopefully they'll show more of uh, the other guys, you know, in the house and because we know what we know who Bryce Mitchell is, we know who Brad is. They're kind of like more of a, the characters of the show, right? Like one of the main characters. Yeah. Brad's like the Superman nerd type dude that trains yeah. in G. And and Bryce is the, the outdoorsman that fucking could do anything you want and make anything. He's MacGyver. He is. I think you'll see a lot more MacGyver moments from him this week. I hope so, man. <laughs>